Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall, inviting you to go with us for an incredible outdoor adventure with a highly skilled hunter. But it's not what you may think. No, this man is not a wild game hunter or a treasure hunter, not a mind hunter or a man hunter, and he is certainly not a house hunter or a ghost hunter. No, this is a hunter who doesn't want to control, capture, or kill his prey. He just wants to preserve it. What do you got there? I found a bridge that I didn't plot for. A stone-faced mini pearl looks out from the courthouse square in Centerville, Tennessee, as Calvin Sneed compares GPS coordinates with an old-fashioned map, confirming an unexpected discovery. Just out of nowhere. Just, just jumped in out of nowhere. And he's about to bust a gut to get there. Well, I've got to go see this. We, we got to go. We got to go. Never go anywhere without this. Those who know his backstory might think this veteran television journalist is rushing to cover exclusive breaking news. But Calvin, the anchorman, has retired. Well, tonight there's more drama surrounding the leadership of Grundy County School. I miss the hustle and bustle of it. I do miss that. I, I, I miss delivering the news and, and talking to people. I miss doing consumer reporting because I felt like I was, I was doing a public service. Now Calvin is changing channels. I'm a bridge hunter. That's what I do. There it is. There it is. Another battery. Let's go do it. That thing is fantastic. With a GoPro camera strapped to his forehead and a camera in hand, Calvin begins documentation of what he has found. I'm in my 60s now, and I felt like I wanted to do something else with the last third of my life that I enjoyed just as much as TV. This is it. This is it. This is preserving history. Oh, look at the way the tree grew into the railing right there. Bridge hunting isn't a pursuit that suddenly started upon retirement. It was an inspiration that came upon Calvin in childhood. There's nothing like riding in the back of your uncle's pickup truck, your 10, 12 years old, the wind is blowing, you know, you're having a good time, you're with your cousins, you know, and all of a sudden these steel beams start crossing over your head like this. And it's like, what in the world is that? So you, st he's gonna be across the bridge in a minute, so you stop and start looking, you know, like, what is that, what is that? It caught my interest there, and it held it all these years. Bridges like this, trust bridges, are worth getting excited about. Especially when you've never seen it before, when it's never been photographed before. It's not on any of the websites. I found it on Google Maps, coming down the Duck River, and I never knew it was here. I never knew it was here. And yes, I get excited about that. <laughs> I think the day that I found out that Calvin was a bridge hunter, I have to say I was, I was very fascinated because in my life I've never heard of anybody who was a bridge hunter, ever. Also on the scene is Dakota Castile, a young news videographer who worked with Calvin and now calls him a friend and a mentor. He's here along with his drone, so we would have an elevated perspective of Calvin's conquests. Calvin just has this mindset. It's his hobby. It's something that he's very passionate about. So, and you can, and you can just tell in his eyes that he's very, very happy to be doing what he's doing. And the thrill of an unexpected find becomes even greater as Calvin analyzes its historic significance. This is a pin-connected Pennsylvania steel truss bridge. They stopped making pin-connected bridges primarily by 1920. So my guess is this one is probably late 1800s, early 1900s. All the leaves on the trees are coming out and we won't see all of the bridge in about a month. They don't build bridges of this caliber anymore. They built this new bridge here right beside the old one. You've got a chance to look at ancient history over here and modern history over here. The engineers who built this one had no idea of its elegance as time went on. And if you look at it, they left it here as a historic ruin. It's still standing. 
It hasn't fallen in the water. Nobody's inspected this thing. Nobody's looked at it. Just the sheer weight of it itself without anything on it should have brought it down in the water. But they didn't design it that way. They designed it to last. One shot up river, shot down river. It goes off in the distance that way. It dead ends here at the end of a 50 foot cliff. So when you're driving on a dirt road down, you've got to make like a complete left turn just to get on the thing. If you're coming off the bridge, you've got to take a, an immediate right turn. Otherwise, you're going to kiss the cliff. It was built on this spot for a reason. And that's because it contributed to the history, the economic development of this particular area around here. And that's why they're historic. Let's move on down to the next one. He'll definitely go to uh, anywhere between six to maybe even a dozen bridges just in one hunting trip. Today is no different as Calvin stalks half a dozen bridges across Hickman and Perry counties. While the ones found today are all truss bridges, Calvin also looks for bridges with concrete arches. Careful, careful. And finding bridges isn't always easy. The rougher the terrain, the more challenging the outdoor adventure. Bridge hunting is definitely not something where you can uh, typically just pull off on the side of the road, take a few pictures and be done. It's something that you've got to, you've got to go hiking, you've got to walk trails, you've got to climb hills to find these bridges and to get up close and personal with them. You start looking at rocks, rocks that move, you know, you start looking at wet spots because you can slide on that. Got to be careful, there's a branch coming out of the rocks here, and it's slick. I don't want to end up in the drink. Whoop! I have found the slipperiest spot on this bank. My goodness. Unbelievable. Whoa! First rule of bridge hunting. Logs give way. Calvin takes a little slip sliding away all in stride on his way to finding a new and unique story with every bridge. Oh man, something hit it. Something slammed into this thing with enough force that it took one of the diagonals out and tilted the whole bridge this way. Like parents with children, Calvin will tell you he loves every bridge he photographs, but he does admit to having a favorite. My absolute favorite bridge is the Irwin S. Cobb Bridge that crosses the Ohio River from Brookport, Illinois to Paducah, Kentucky. It's nine or 10 spans of big blue steel crossing the river. It is a spectacular bridge, just elegant in its own little way, easily the most beautiful bridge I've ever photographed. Calvin hurries from one to the next, relishing every experience and taking lots of pictures. His last shot at every bridge typically is a selfie to prove he was actually there. It's the preservation of a part of history that's vanishing because they're blowing these things up right and left. They're tearing them down right in front of our eyes. They're not preserving them. They're not trying to keep them. They're not looking at the historic legacy that these bridges have to each community. And I feel like saving them on a camera is about the only way to pass that on to the next generation. History is not history unless you pass it down. You gotta pass it on to somebody. It doesn't become history unless you do that. Calvin loves old bridges like this one, which is being used as part of a walking and biking trail. Now, over the years, he's collected nearly 18,000 images of almost 800 bridges in 18 states. Now, some of those pictures are published in a picture book. For more information, you can go to our website, wildsidetv.com. Now, Dakota Castile, the young news photographer who provided us with drone footage, is actually a former Wildside intern, and he's the one that told us about Calvin Sneed, bridge hunter. There's a bit of a sad footnote to the story, and we'll share that with you at the end of the show.